What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're finally going to get moving on this PW80 engine. I know it's been a while, I had a lot of things going on. I'm sure you guys have too. Um, thank you for being patient, thanks for all the comments, thanks for all the new subscribers, keep them coming. Uh, today's video is going to be um, just a transmission side of this PW80. So without any further ado, let's get going. Next thing we're going to do is install the crank. So I forgot to heat the crank or uh, cool the crank in the freezer overnight. So what we're going to try and do is let it cool for about an hour or so. Um, I'm not sure if that'll work, but I've done it before overnight and heated the case. It was the same thing as the bearing, just dropped right in. So we're going to try it for about an hour. Um, then we'll heat the case and we'll go ahead and give it a shot. So let's let that cool for a little bit. We're coming back, back to the kitchen and try this again. All right. This isn't as cool as we want it to be. In about an hour. Go in here. Pull our case out. Toss it up there. And left side case. We're going to put the tapered end down in the left side. So here we go. Here goes nothing. And that's it. So that worked out well. Just had to give it a little push and we're in. So, looks like you don't need an overnight, but an hour in the freezer, 400 degrees for the case. And we're settled in. So let's get back out, let this cool down, and get the rest of it installed. Alright, we're back on the stand. So, let me fix you there. There we go. Back on the stand, we got everything installed. If you look, this spins freely, no binding. So we're already at a bonus from where we started. Um, if you remember, right about here, in this part of the range of motion, we were blocked off. So this is a 100% turnaround from what we had. So crankshaft in. Next thing we're going to do is put the crankshaft O-ring on. We got a replacement one here. Go ahead and throw that on. Boom, that's gonna seat right there. I believe. Let me double check there. No, I think let me I think that goes down all the way to the bottom. Yeah. There we go. My mistake. All the way to the bottom. And we're gonna be good there. So now we're gonna start installing all of the parts on this. So first things first is going to be our transmission system. So we'll wrangle that up and I'll show you how we install that. All right, so we got everything set. There's, we're just got to get everything lined up. So there's our transmission, our forks. I got my shift shaft here in my finger. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and get this O-ring off. Go ahead and hook that off. So we got that. And our new one's here in the bag. I replaced all of the bearings, seals, um, and o-rings on this one this time so we shouldn't have any issues so all we're doing is sliding that over getting it in place and we're all set that one's definitely got some uh, bulge compared to the last one so first things first we're going to go ahead and get the transmission in uh, if you want to see real quick how it looks when you're looking at the manual so you know how to hold it in your hand you're going to look something like that go ahead and give that a pause but that's how we're going to do it as well Let me back up here there we go. So we're going to hold it just like they got it there. And before we do that, one thing we can't forget, uh, I believe they call this some kind of counter shaft bushing. Uh, they got a name for it. Let's see. They do call it a counter shaft bushing. So this needs to set right on your counter shaft. Um, it's actually going to go on the other side. All right, that was wrong. I had the uh, wrong half on so we had to get our right half so we'll start from the top we got our counter shaft and then we have our uh, transmission there so first thing we're going to want to do and I still have mine on the counter shaft is put this counter shaft bushing right over our counter shafts going to go now when you do it and you look in the manual it's going to say hey throw it in just like this and everything's going to work out perfectly 
Um, it doesn't usually work out perfectly. So I'll, sh I'll try to show you that now. It not working out perfectly. So if you keep everything lined up together and you start to lose a little bit of it and your alignment. Watch, this one's going to work perfect this time. And it did. It actually worked out perfect. So there you go. That's how you drop the counter shaft and the transmission shaft in. Next, we're going to put our shift forks in. First one first is going to be our skinnier one. That's going to go towards the bottom. And that's going to go on the transmission shaft here. And this one is where it gets a little tricky. Sometimes it's easier to lift up. There we go. And then pull back a little bit if we can. It's not going to let us. So that's where it gets a little tricky, a little hairy. If we can pull it up like that. If you can see that, we're pulling up the whole thing as one. Then we're going to try and slide that in there. Here we go. Slide it in. And we're still in good place there. So where that's going to go, if you can see that there, that fork's going to line up right over that hole and it's going to sit in the bottom groove on the transmission shaft. The next one we're going to grab is going to be the top fork. And that is going to ride in the groove right here on the counter shaft. So we're going to go ahead and put that one in. That one usually has no problem sliding in, just like that. And we're set there. So next thing we're going to do is put our, uh, our shift shaft, what do they call that actually? Let's see, they call that the shift fork shaft, which is what we have here. Um, we put a new O-ring on the end here, and that is just going to go straight down until it seats out on this C-clip. So we're going to drive it straight down through. And it just seats on that top uh, fork. So we're set there. Next, oh, let me back up a hair because if we get that end, we won't be able to move. So actually next is going to be our shift drum. And when we install that, we need to make sure that we have it installed the right way. This side here needs to go on the outside of the case because that's where our shift lever rides in those pins to make sure it's shifting gears. So I checked through this. Everything on it looked good. Now actually one of our pins looks a little loose and higher than the rest. So let's go ahead and get that fixed and we'll start from there. All right, so now we're even again. So, like I said, that end is going to go to the outside of the case, and we want this top end sticking up. So we're going to go ahead and move those forks a little bit out of our way. And that should slide down, and this bottom groove is going to be for your bottom fork, and this top groove, obviously, is going to be for your top. So we're going to get it in, and we're going to want to get it somewhat in one of the grooves, just like that. And then we're going to want to line that hole up straight down. And then we can put our shift shaft, shift, what do they call that? Shift fork shaft in, and it's going to go straight down. And you might have to wiggle it around to get it lined up. But boom, right there. And we're smooth there. And you should notice the shifting then. You're not going to be able to do a ton of it right here. But what's going to happen is when you shift, it's going to bring this whole system up, down, and change the gears. So that's as far as we need to go on the inside. Um, everything else we're going to do is going to be on the outside. So what we need to do now is close the case up and we are going to be all set. So first we're going to support the right side, which is going to be the transmission side on our case, just like that. And we're going to run some, I'm going to use some Yama Lube 4, Yama Bond 4, whatever it's called here. And I'm going to run a nice bead around all of these surfaces, which I've already smoothed out, cleaned off, and made nice on both halves. And then we are going to put our cases together. So let's get that.
So now we're going to go ahead and put our um, left side crankcase on. So we want to line everything up, keep everything pretty well lined up from a visual side. Um, I'll help you see that a little bit. <coughs> Obviously the crank is going to go right over, but then you should be able to all right, it's a perfect place to freeze it. So if you look at those dust seals there, there was one there for the uh, shift shaft. Um, I believe the Kickstarter was on the other side. We also had the transmission sh uh, dust shield there. Um, it was a comment by Soyux94. I might be saying that wrong, but he was saying that the seals were on backwards, and he's 100% correct. Those three in the back need to be placed um, with the flat side or smooth side facing out. So if you look at these seals, there's the smooth side there and that open side. So the ones on the bike are installed like this. Um, they need to be installed like that. So we'll go ahead and get those filmed, or not filmed, but we'll get those fixed um, probably after this video. But I appreciate the comment. It makes me realize somebody's actually watching. Um, not only that, but it helps me learn. I'm not a professional. Um, and it might help someone else watching the video learn as well. So, you know, keep the comments coming. I appreciate it. Let's get back to the build. See the counter shaft come through this one. You should be able to see straight down through where your shift fork's going to go, or your shift uh, lever. And then you should see your shift shaft fork. See that one's a little off. And then you should be able to see that top line up for the engine mount and those dampers. So. We're going to go ahead and get that down. One thing you don't want to do is force it um, too much. You can give it a little extra motivation, if you want to call it that, which I'm going to do. I might. I got a very unstable camera spot here. So I might move you real quick and then slide it down. All right, push it a little bit down off camera. I didn't want to knock the camera down so we're down in and we're just going to keep pressing it down one thing like i said we don't want to force it go crazy oh there we go starting to seat in make sure our connecting rods out of the way and we'll keep squeezing it down and that was what happened so what i'm going to do so I don't keep losing you. I'm just gonna squeeze that together and then we'll come back and get the screws ready and start closing it up. All right, so I didn't drop you for 100th time. I went ahead and smooshed it down. We're pretty well flush. Uh, we're tight together. Now we can go ahead and put our screws in. Um, one thing we need to know about this is there's a specific pattern um, on the way these screws go. And I did actually order, I got all the old ones here. I actually ordered all new ones, so we'll get those out and I'll show you that pattern. All right, so we got that flattened out and when I was opening all the screws, I noticed a problem here. So here's our original set, 10 screws, six long ones, three mediums, and then a short. Well, when we got our order in, it came with six shorts, one medium, three longs, and the long, isn't even as long as the one we need. So we're gonna go ahead and use the old uh, set. I'll run you in where each one goes. So we'll start with the single. The single is gonna go here on the end. All right, and then we'll go with our three mediums. Those are going to go, you got one that's gonna come, uh, oh, let me double check here. He's gonna come up top here. All right, and then you got one more. He's gonna go here, and then you got one on the bottom. Let me check and make sure that's in the right one. Yep, he's gonna go here. All right, the rest are going to be the long ones, and I have two pretty beat up ones, so I'm gonna try and keep those on the outside. Um, this is where the chain area is, and then your shift lever, obviously. This one actually looks like it was probably in there, because that area is was tough to clean out and this screw is the most rusty so I'm going to swap them out so this one doesn't just get destroyed. I'll put this one up here and then I'll put this one. I don't want to put a crappy one like this on the inside. We'll put that one here. And then we got four more to go on the inside. We go here. One, two, three up top. 
and then four there. So that's how it goes. You got your one smallest one here, and then you run your three that are the same size. They're in the middle. You got one here, one here, and one here, and then the rest of them all around are going to be the long ones. So we'll tighten that up, and we'll get working on the rest. One thing we want to do before we start screwing these all down is make sure that our crank still has some play. So we're all the way, not 100% tight, but we're tight and we still have some spin action there. So again, uh, I'm not using a torque wrench, so if, if this hurts your eyes, go ahead and look away now. And we'll tighten all 10 of these down. We'll do a little bit, then a quarter turn, then a quarter turn, and a quarter turn until they're all tight. So hold on tight. All right, that's all buttoned up. It's probably about 20, 30 more minutes of video there, so we're gonna cut it. Uh, that's gonna do it for part two. Uh, stay tuned, we'll get part three up. Part three is just gonna be the clutch side, button up the rest, and get the covers on. And hopefully throw it back on the, throw it on at least the table, maybe on the bike, get it started. So stay tuned, hopefully it's not as long till the next one. I appreciate all you guys again. Thanks for subscribing, thanks for the comments. Keep them coming. I'll see you guys next time.